Hello everybody, this is Tim once again with my final Texas Chainsaw Mask review. Uh, I just got done watching uh, the worst piece of shit in this franchise that it has to offer. I don't know if in a, a, a older vid or one of the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre vids I did that I said that th I think I may have said that this film is better than Next Generation. But now watching it again after not seeing it in a while, this film is worse than Next Generation. It's worse just because it's it's not as stupid as Next Generation. Well, it is as stupid in some way, but by by as stupid I mean it's not got as like stupid ass a plot as uh, Next Generation. Uh, had with all the alien shit and stuff like that that wasn't needed but uh this film is so fucking dull and there's just nothing to it next generation is bad but it's shitty fun bad it's fun you can watch it and just laugh at it because it's so fucking shitty you can't laugh at this film this film fucking sucks sucks the cock hard <laughs> this is this is one of the worst sequels in a mainstream uh horror franchise that i've seen at all <laughs> a long fucking time but anyway this film has a decent idea I mean, the idea of it is pretty cool which is fucking wasted potential 101 for this movie uh, it kicks off as like a direct sequel to the first movie it picks up from the, the end of the first one which is pretty cool the beginning of the film does anyway and if you had if you were a good filmmaker you would just keep the film going from right there from the end of the first one but no then they skip into the future I guess uh, never clear what time period this takes place even though it takes place in con it looks like contemporary it looks like nowadays contemporary times but uh it doesn't make much sense that way I'll get into that in a second um jump into the story here it picks up after the end of the first after the end of the first movie the police show up the sheriff's there the sheriff is played by a uh, black actor which I'm fine with but a black sheriff in the 70s I, I don't really know about that but <laughs> But whatever, um, <clears throat> not really historically accurate there. I don't have a problem with a black sheriff or anything in movies or nothing like that. But I just mean that this feels really, this feels like bullshit. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, the the sheriff shows up there. Uh, he's going to arrest uh, the Sawyers. You got uh, Bill Mosley in this film playing uh, Jim Sidow's character. Uh, he's playing the cook. He's okay as the cook replacement. He's no Jim, but uh, he does decent. He's barely in the movie. He's pretty much a cameo. Uh, he gets killed at the beginning during a shootout. And you got a bunch of other Sawyers there who I don't even, you never seen before, but it's that way in every movie you get new family members, so I don't know who the fuck these people are. But, uh, and uh, you got a woman there who has a little baby, and of course the, the, dog, the baby is going to become important as she grows up. Uh, She's obviously, well, she's going to be the main character. But the sheriff's getting ring is going to arrest him. He just wants him to send out Leatherface for some reason, which I don't know why, because the whole fucking family was in on it. So why just arrest the, the him just because he's the one that did the killing, but everybody else was in on it and helped him. So but he's the one that did the killing directly. So arrest him, let everybody else go. What the fuck ever. Uh, <laughs> um, so they going to send out Leatherface. They're going to co- Go down without a fight. Basically, the Sawyers are. I'm going to give up without a fight. And then the fucking vigilante redneck mob shows up there. Whatever the kind of mob is there. And they're so over the top. And they just automatically attack uh, the Sawyers. And just fucking kill them every single one. Burn the place down. And they all die. Well, except for Leatherface. Who manages to escape and get the hell out of Dodge. Um, and then uh, you get the most fucking. One of the most fucking over the top scenes I've seen in a while. One of the rednecks is like going like behind the house and sees a woman there with a baby, and uh, she's he gets the baby and she's like help me and he fucking it's, well it's one of the Sawyers the one uh, and he uh, he fucking kicks her in the face and just kills her stone cold dad. I'm like what nobody is gonna fucking react this way seeing a helpless woman with a baby regardless of whether or not she's a her her family was serial killers because uh, I'm pretty sure the other family members of the Sawyers weren't in on the killing they were just related and just didn't give a fuck what the other family members did so I really don't see somebody being this cruel so over the top points right there for that so they take the baby um she grows up she becomes the character Heather um, raised by the drunken rednecks. <laughs> A drunken redneck couple anyway she grows up she's the character heather of course she works in a fucking butcher shop i believe 
Uh, I don't know this actress name. She's really hot, though. <laughs> That's one of the only things this movie has going for it. This actress is incredibly hot. One of the hottest of this franchise. Well, the hottest, I would say, of this franchise. Well, maybe Jessica Biel might have her beat, but she's pretty fucking hot. Uh, she's one of the only bonus points for the, for this franchise. I mean, for this, well, not this franchise, this film. I mean, um, I'm jump right into it here. She has a friend who's pretty much a whore. That's fucking her. That's fucking Heather's uh, boyfriend, who's played by Trey Songs. I didn't even know who Trey Songs was. I've never even heard of him until I seen this movie, and then I looked it up. And he's like a famous musician or something, I guess, in a way. I don't know how famous he is, but I never knew he existed until I seen this movie. But uh. He's just there. Uh, her uh, Heather's friend is is the whore. I'm just gonna call her the whore for the rest of this review, cause she just fucks around and tries to fuck Heather's boyfriend. I guess cause he's the song. <laughs> but anyway, and uh, the whore has her own man who's like this some kind of artsy looking band guy or something. But he seems like a gay stoner in a way. I don't have a problem with gay people or stoners really, but. <laughs> I'm just saying he seems like a fucking gay stoner. But anyway. So, uh. She receives uh, a letter in the mail telling, him, telling her that her grandma has died. Uh, and that she's inherited her uh, estate, her house, and everything, the land, all that shit. <laughs> so she finds out she's adopted, and then she knows it now, and she wants to. She wants her and her boyfriend. And well, the whore and the whore's the the gay. Well, the, I'm just gonna call the whore and the gay stoner. Well, the whore and the gay stoner want to go with them, <coughs> so they can go on a cross country trip here all with her. So they head out in the van. They head to the place. They pick up this hitchhiker, and you automatically know it's been a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. You don't fucking pick up hitchhikers. Don't have anything to do with hitchhikers, cause they're gonna fuck you over in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Oh, you get a, a great song here, which is uh, one of the highlights of this movie, where it says, this song is saying stuff, something like, God's gonna fuck you up, or something like that. I don't know who sings this song, but this song, to be honest, is better than the movie. Um, uh, so, uh, they head there, they go to her house, they decide to leave, go into town, they leave the fucking hitchhiker there, who they don't even know. Uh, big surprise, he's a thief, he tries to steal everything in the whole fucking house. He manages to make it uh, downstairs into the basement. Leatherface has been fucking living in the house ever since. I believe I believe the grandma was taking care of him. Um, he's down there in the fucking... Uh, the, well, the thief goes down there into the basement. He's fucking trying to pry the door open down there so he can see what's behind there. If there's any other shit to steal. Leatherface shows up, knocks his fucking brains out with a sledgehammer, crushes his head in. Uh, pretty decent entertaining scene here, kill scene-wise. The kills in this film are better than the ones in Next Generation, but uh, all together, the well, this kill anyway is better than a, better than all the ones in Next Generation. But the whole film together is much, is a much weaker film than Next Generation. Well, they're pretty close, but it's weaker than Next Generation because it's just a bad film with no redeeming value. Where Next Generation is bad but still has Matthew McConaughey, which makes it funny, funny bad. Fu and I'll take funny bad over just bad, but uh. So, uh, Fuckface is dead, the thief's dead, um, the, they're in town, you get Clint Eastwood's son playing a cop, <laughs> he doesn't die in the film, I guess because he's Clint Eastwood's son, you find out that the main redneck who was in on the vigilante mob that killed the Sawyers is the fucking mayor, <laughs> and, uh, the cop, uh, Clint Eastwood's son, his character is, uh, is the mayor's son, <laughs> I don't think you, you don't think you know this yet, but you find out later. So, uh, they're in town, uh, fucking buying some shit, they head back to the house, um, uh, they see that shit's been stolen, they know, well, you never should have left the fucking hitchhiker there in the first place, I wouldn't have left some random guy I don't even know at my house, anyway, but what the fuck ever, uh, she decides to not let this ruin her day, so, uh, that stuff, some of her stuff's been stolen in her new home she's just inherited, so, oh, before I forget, when she first gets to her to the home, this old fuck gives her a letter and says it's from her, uh, grandmother and says, extremely urgent, read this fucking letter, extremely urgent, make sure you read this letter, and this almost makes, this makes me hate the film, it makes me hate it, <laughs> She, he tells her deliberately, read the letter. Now, if you just inherited a house, the first thing you got when you got there was a fucking letter <laughs> from a relative you never knew. Uh, wouldn't you read this fucking letter? Especially if the guy said extremely urgent, read me now. <laughs> she puts it up, never reads it until the end of the fucking movie. 
I could, oh god. I should just I could just stop the review right there and just give it one star like I'm going to. I'll just go ahead and tell you this is a one star movie. I like this film less than Next Generation just because it's just a bad film. Like I've said, Next Generation is more fun because it's just a it's <laughs> funny bad shit. But anyway, <sighs> this mother back into this fucking thing here. Um, so they're at home. They decide to have a party. Uh, whore wants to get uh Trey Song outside into the barn so she can fuck him. She gets him out there. They're basically fucking for the rest of the film here for a while anyway, <laughs> for the second act. Um, Gay Stoner is looking around the house. He sees uh the fucking <laughs> pathway down into the basement. He heads down in there. Leatherface jumps out. Gay Stoner takes off. He hooks Gay Stoner in the back, pulls him downstairs. That's it. End of death scene. That's all you see. Um, well, that's all you see right there anyway. Then uh. Heather's walking around. She comes. She walks. Uh, well, she walks out of the room. Walks back into the room. Leatherface in there cutting some fingers, which is pretty decent. Um, and then he grabs her, knocks her out. Um, she wakes up down in the basement. Uh, oh, the guy that plays Leatherface in this film sucks. This is the worst leather. This is the second worst Leatherface. The Leatherface in Next Generation is worse, just because of the fact the way he's represented. The Leatherface here. Is just fucking dull. This is the dull of the face. He's just uneventful. He has nothing to him. There, he's just a waste of space. There's no charisma to this guy who's playing him. I don't know the actor's name. I don't give a fuck. He has no charisma at all. The second worst leather face in the series. Even though the the leather face from Next Generation was represented much worse than this guy, I'll be honest. The actor who played him in Next Generation had more charisma than this guy. He was just represented. He just represented the character horribly in that movie, though. And this one here is dull as fuck. <clears throat> but yeah, it's the second worst representation. Um, so Heather wakes up on the floor. Uh, Leatherface is uh, he fucking saws Gay Stoner in half because Gay Stoner grabbed his mask, which is one of the only decent emotional uh, scenes. Well, emotion scenes for the Leatherface. Other than this, he's dull for the entire movie. He saws Gay Stoner in half. Heather just runs out of there. I'm like, okay, Leatherface, you just left her laying on the ground. Just expect her to what lay there after she woke up. When you left the door fucking wide open, whatever. She runs out of there. Um, oh, uh, other faces dug up the grandma's corpse. And well, you know, in these films, they fucking like to keep them, keep, keep the dead relatives in the family still. So he's dug up her corpse and she's like sitting in a chair or whatever. Um, uh, Heather runs outside. She fucking hides in a coffin for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, if you were running through a field and you then you already outran the guy, would you just stop and, or, and hide in the coffin, or would you just keep going? But this is one of the only decent 3D shots in the whole movie. 3D in this film sucks. Honestly, it sucks. The opening credits, uh, when it just pops up and says Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, and the words like uh, the title uh, fucking cuts in pieces like a, it's been chainsaw and flies at you. Uh, that's cool 3D. That's the only this and the... Uh, there's three. There's only three cool 3D shots in this whole movie. That scene, um, well, this scene's this 3D scene's decent. I would say two cool ones and one decent one. Uh, she hides in the coffin. Let the face is fucking sawing through the coffin. The saw's coming straight at your face, which is a decent uh, 3D scene. Um, let the face gets distracted when Trey Songs and the whore walk out of the barn where they've been fucking the entire time. Which we're supposed to get the idea that uh, there's nobody really cares about Heather and she's gonna fucking side with her own her. Uh, family that she just discovered she had side with Leatherface but uh she doesn't know that Trey Songs is cheating on her so why would she not care what happens to him I mean if she can't bring up the cheating plot if it has no effect on the character so what the fuck is the point <laughs> but whatever um so Leatherface goes over to kill Trey Songs and the whore he gets distracted by them he comes towards them Trey Songs fucking <laughs> Uh, locks his stuff in the barn with the whore. Uh, then comes Heather and fucking plows through the the, the, uh, the barn with the fucking van. They all get in the van. They head out of there. Leatherface chases after them. Uh, saws at the van. They try to ram through the gate, but they can't. And then uh, Leatherface is fucking sawing through the van. The gate manages to open. They take off out there. Fucking Leatherface saws uh, saws one. He saw okay. He saws one tire. One just saws the side of one tire. They go couple extra feet and then they just fucking the whole van flips over the whole entire van flips over completely does do vans do that just from having one fucked up tire that's been cut i don't think so bullshit stupid shit 
that I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> Dumbass <laughs> fucking reason to wreck. Now, this is the worst fucking forced way to, for the for victims not to get away in a horror film I've ever seen. With one tire slash and no fucking van flips over. I'm like, what the fuck? But whatever. Um, then Trey Songz just dies from that. He just dies from that. So you got the most popular celebrity in the whole movie is fucking dead from that. I'm like, what? I mean, I don't give a shit about his music. I don't. But I'm just saying, why hire a guy solely on the fact that he's a popular musician? I mean, musician. And not even doing fucking shit with him. I mean, like, what is the point? <laughs> So he's dead. Well, uh, I guess name value was the point. Um, he's dead. Uh, Leatherf uh, Leatherface comes after him. He pushes the van like over on his side, which is a, a decent scene. Um, that's a, well, one of the only other scenes I like. <coughs> he pushes the van over. Heather gets out. Uh, Horror's still there. Heather leads Leatherface away so Horror can escape. Uh, uh, Heather takes off, makes it to a carnival. Now you're thinking a carnival, right? This should you could you should be able to get some cool, you know, Leatherface shit here because it's a carnival. Motherfucker with a chainsaw, you think you can get some entertaining stuff here? But they're at the carnival and Leatherface, they don't really do anything. They got a little saw joke here where there's a fucking guy dressed up in a pig mask and he looks at Leatherface says want to play or something like that, and Leatherface scares him off and saw guy runs like a little bitch. <laughs> but uh, that's not enough for this movie. Sorry. Sorry, Lionsgate. It's not. <laughs> but, um, Heather climbs up on, like, a Ferris wheel, I think, and it goes around to the other side. And you, I thought they would do something neat here, but they don't. Clint Eastwood Jr. shows up and points a gun at him, and Leatherface is like, oh, fuck, gun? Shit, I can't do nothing with that, man. This chainsaw ain't good enough to deflect bullets. So he just slings the chainsaw at him, and the guy dodges it, and he goes, like, straight towards the camera. Like I said, this is the only other cool 3D shot in the movie. There's only two. But, uh, <laughs> that... I just find it funny. Leatherface is like, gun, fuck, oh shit, run, motherfucker. <laughs> he takes off running like a bat out of hell. But anyway, I just thought that was funny. He's like, my weakness. <laughs> With bullets in me, I'm powerless. <laughs> but whatever. So he takes off running. Uh, Heather gets down off the fire swell. Um, They tell the sheriff about it. And the sheriff was at the beginning of the movie. Uh, he was uh, is the same black sheriff. I don't know the, the character's name. But um, it's pr uh, he's at the beginning of the movie, and he's uh, still sheriff. <laughs> Heather goes to the sheriff station to uh, tells him about everything that's going on. Uh, Redneck King, who's the mayor, shows up and fucking tells him he wants something done about this. And they put two and two together and pretty much realize it's Leatherface back again. Um, uh, they leave the fucking coincidentally leave the evidence of all the Sawyer stuff sitting on the table with Heather in the room. Which, I'm like, what? <laughs> Whatever. And she reads through it all and uh, figures out what's happened, uh, that she's actually related to the Sawyers and all that shit. And so she automatically sides with the Sawyers. I mean, because of that, even though, well, she, like, sides with Leatherface, even though the fact that Leatherface has caused her boyfriend to get killed. I mean, think about this. She didn't know her boyfriend was cheating on her. So she still loved him. So what the fuck? Why would she side with Leatherface? I understand people care about family, but uh, somebody you love, especially like a spouse or a boyfriend, is pretty much family. <laughs> and uh, if some if you're another relative who is psychotic killed him, I don't think you're going to side with him regardless of whatever. And plus, you know, Horror's dead. And, uh, well, you mean, uh, well, he tried to kill the Horror, and she's friends with Heather too, so I'm like, what the fuck? She still sides with Leatherface? Bullshit. Give me a break. But, um, Heather reads through all the old information and stuff and figures out what happened. Um, so she wants to try to try to fucking find Leatherface, I guess, and uh, get him to. Well, she just well, I'm not sure what she wants to do at this point. She just fucking leaves the police station. Uh, then the the sheriff is on the. Well, the sheriff and the fucking mayor are sitting there, and the mayor's talking to um uh, this cop who's uh. Searching the Sawyer residence, and he goes in there. Leatherface kills him and chops him with an axe a couple of times. And decent scene. You get a, a, a fucking scene. Uh, you get another scene, uh, signature scene from the franchise. Another one where uh, he fucking cuts off the cop's face. Uh, 
and he's like sewing on it and shit. And it's uh, well, no, he's sewing on the mask that he already has, but he cuts off the cop's face too, which is it's a decent scene. I mean, it's okay. I've seen the shit before in the other films with him cutting off faces and stuff, so it's not really a big deal here. But it was okay. So they've seen Leatherface uh, on like on their talk. Well, the mayor's like talking to the cop through like a his iPhone or his camera or something. Other well, he's holding up his, his fucking iPhone or something. Another I don't remember what it is. Um, so that he can the the mayor and the cop uh, the sheriff can see inside the house and they see Leatherface and so they know it's him. But uh, oh yeah, that brings me to my timeline question here. Um. The first movie took place in the 70s, right? Or the late 70s? Um, Heather would have to be like, would be like in her, what, late 20s, in the 80s or something like that? This film would have to take place in the late 80s to early 90s. Not the fucking 2000s, so I'm like, what? Timeline makes no sense, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, I know it's Leatherface, Mary wants to kill him. Uh, they go and kidnap Heather from a bar, I believe it's where she's at, where she's talking to that old fuck who gave her the letter and basically told her, did you read the letter? And she's like, no. He already just slapped her across the face after that, regardless of how hot she is. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, Clint Eastwood Jr. basically kidnaps her, uh, uh takes her to this, uh, factory where they want to, well, Leatherface wants to kill her because I, he's supposedly, he's afraid of a repeat accident of, uh, him being attacked like he uh, well because he let one get away at the end of the first movie and his whole family was killed he's afraid that if he lets another get away that he might be killed and he might be threatened by this but um anyway so uh Leatherface finds out where she's at she's at this old slaughter slaughterhouse she's tied up Leatherface shows up there and she's got a burn mark on her which is like from the family crest that her uh her mom, like, wore, like, an S or something, so, Leatherface sees the burn mark, and he just automatically assumes that she's related to him, I'm like, okay, that's a little far-fetched, but I guess I could buy it in a way, um, maybe, <laughs> but I'll, I'll give the movie, I'll let the movie have that one, but, um, so Leatherface cuts her loose, the mayor shows up, the mayor and the, the mayor's buddy beat the fuck out of Leatherface, they beat the shit out of him, they kick his ass, other face gets the shit beat out of him right here. I mean, if you want to see like a horror, I mean, I'm okay with people getting the upper hands on horror villains and occasionally like whooping their ass, but to the point where the horror villain barely even fights back till he gets just beat up like a little pussy, I'm like, okay. I mean, they pretty much turn the other face into a little pussy right here. He gets the shit beat out of him. But, uh, so they're beating the fuck out of Leatherface and they put a chain around his neck and they're going to pull him into this grinder. Um, so they can kill him with style, I guess. And so Heather, who now just because, just well, because now she's found out she's a sawyer, she's automatically insane for some reason. So she fucking takes a pitchfork, kills one guy, um, distracts the mayor while Leatherface gets uh, gets loose, and she fucking grabs the chainsaw, and you get the worst line in this entire franchise where she says. Do you think, cuz? And I'm like, oh, fuck. The line delivery is so bad and it's so fucking cheesy. Oh, that shit right there just makes me like this film less than Next Generation. She throws him the chainsaw, Leatherface gets the chainsaw, cuts on the dude's uh, <clears throat> fucking feet so he can't run away or get away. And uh, Leatherface is forcing him back uh, down into the grinder. The sheriff shows up. He can stop him. The sheriff can stop him, but the sheriff's like, an eye for an eye, because that's what the fucking redneck uh, mayor dude, well, the redneck, he'll, redneck king said to him at the beginning of the movie when he killed the Sawyers, the redneck's like, eye for an eye, sheriff. So the sheriff repeats the same thing here, because I guess the sheriff kind of sympathizes with Leatherface, which the movie tries to get you to sympathize with Leatherface, but Leatherface has killed everybody in the movie, and just because he's getting the shit beat out of him, I mean, which is, I mean, he kind of deserves it I mean, anyway, so regardless of the fact that he's handicapped i mean that, that doesn't take away from all the stuff he's done i don't care how stupid you are if you murder like 30 people and cut them up and eat them you're fucking insane it's, it doesn't matter but um <laughs> the fucking sheriff lets um 
Let's let the face kill the mare. The mare goes down into the grinder and gets grinded up. And a little bit of bad CGI here that looks real shitty. Um, but it's a oh, it's slightly okay death. Um, mare's dead. Pretty much after that. Oh, I hate this. I hate this till this day. The sheriff looks at him. Looks at the Heather and Leatherface and says, Clean this shit up. Basically, go home. It's over. He just leaves. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't care if I, if I was the sheriff, and I don't care who the fuck's the sheriff, but if you sympathize with Leatherface, that's fine. Okay, I can understand that a little bit. And then you just let him go. He's not going to stop killing. I mean, he's going to fucking kill somebody else, whether it be random accident or whatever. So, what the fuck, sheriff? I mean, what? This is so unrealistic. Now, that makes me just... I was when I was watching the film I had it about two stars here. This made me drop it down to about fucking half a star. <coughs> but <laughs> Oh, I, I just thought that was so fucking stupid. He just lets him go. I'm like, "What?" I mean, he can understand him letting Heather go cuz you know they fucking kidnapped her, but Leatherface? What? <laughs> anyway, so Heather and Leatherface head back to the house basically. Home sweet home. Now she decides to. She reads the letter, the fucking letter that old fart gave her finally, and it basically tells her every single thing that she would have needed to know at the beginning of the movie. And I'm like, what? Oh god, what the fuck? Why didn't you read this at the beginning? This would have saved the entire film. It explains everything. You know what? I was gonna give this film one star. Fuck that shit. Half a star. Half a star. That right there just raises the stupidity rank sky high. Half a star. Fuck that shit. Um, so she decides to stay there and take care of Leatherface and live there in that house for the rest of her life. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, Leatherface has got a fucking hit list too down there in the basement where, he, uh, where he's like scratched off people that he's killed that were responsible for killing his family. Like who were members of the Redneck Mob and he's got like still like looks like like seven people to go so I'm like they're not gonna make a sequel to this movie there's no no way in hell they're gonna make a sequel to this movie I mean cuz what are you gonna get like Heather trying to keep Leatherface down there and him occasionally sneaking out and killing somebody and her trying to cover it up and uh, and occasionally somebody getting close to trying to to killing him and then Heather saving him I mean what is gonna be like Leatherface and his semi little sidekick? They're never gonna make a sequel like that. There's no reason. Leatherface is dull as fuck in this movie. His look looks like shit. The red shirt, he just wears like a plain red shirt. And the with he's got gray hair, so he's like an old fart Leatherface, which I'm fine with an old fart, older Leatherface, but get an actor who has more charisma who can pull off the old fart <laughs> Leatherface style better than this. But, um, <laughs> Leatherface sucked. Um, all the actors were mediocre to just being there, just there, paycheck, no, no reason. Um, Heather is hot. Her character arc is bullshit, though. No, it's useless. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, this is a bad movie. This is a very bad movie. This franchise is is turned to shit. This is the worst in the franchise. It's utter shit. Uh, Next Generation is dog shit, but it's entertaining dog shit. I'd rather watch something that's stupid as fuck that I can laugh at with, than something that just so fucking bad that it just can't be acknowledged. <laughs> this film is horrible. I, would, I was going to give it one star, but I'd give it a half a star out of a possible four. This is the worst film in this entire franchise. They, 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 should, they don't even need to make any more sequels in this franchise. Which, uh, this isn't really a sequel, it's pretty much another reboot. Um, which all these films in this franchise are pretty much reboots. They really don't need to continue this franchise at all. It's just getting worse and worse. And this is just a turd swimming in a big pile of shit right here. This is fucking the pits. So, I'll see you guys again with the first Halloween review for the first Halloween film, obviously. <laughs> so, um, I'll see you guys again with a much better film. Avoid this film like the plague. <laughs> do not watch this film. No matter if you like all the rest, do not watch this film. I'll see you guys again with another review. Uh, sorry about the jump, everybody. I just wanted to say before I end this review that I almost forgot how to, I almost forgot to mention how the fucking whore dies in this movie. 
and uh, when the cop is uh, looking through Leatherface, his, uh, his room and all, well, and, and he's in the, when the cop is in the fucking basement in the movie and he's looking through all the shit and everything, um, well, the horror's disappeared and they weren't able to find her. And the cop's looking down there and he finds a freezer and he opens it up and the horror just leaps out straight towards him, just like reminiscent of the first movie. <laughs> and then he fucking shoots her in the head because he's surprised by it. And I'm like, again, what the fuck, movie? What, what, whatever, dumbass death scene. <laughs> but, uh, I had to cut right then because of my computer failed and I had to pick it back up. I had to pick my computer back up and fucking, oh well, get my, get back, uh, get my video working back again because the motherfucker fell over. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this film sucks and uh, I can't wait to jump into the Halloween series, which is, well, I can't wait to jump into the first Halloween movie. Which is going to be a sigh of relief, which is a much better film than this one. So it'll be fun to watch that and to review that. And I'll probably upload my review for this film on the same day as I upload my review for Halloween as well. They'll probably upload it on the same day. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the Halloween reviews. And after I finish those films, I'm going to jump into the fucking Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And then probably go to Friday the 13th after that since there's so many of those motherfuckers. Even though I love them, there's a fuckload of them. And then after them, it'd probably be Hellraiser or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to try my best to at least finish off every major horror movie franchise. So to conclude this franchise, uh, the first movie, it's great. Four stars, classic. Second movie, it's pretty good. Leatherface is more of a joke, but it's still a pretty good movie. Uh, the third movie is just okay. It's kind of like uh, trying to go into mainstream there, but it's all right. It's watchable. Uh, the fourth movie, complete dog shit, but funny dog shit. Watch it if, you're, if you like to smoke weed and get high. It'll be a lot more enjoyable like that. Or if you like to drink and get plastered, and it'll be a lot more enjoyable like that. <laughs> but it's funny in a bad way. The the fifth one, this one, the final film. Oh, uh, the remake, it's okay, but it's useless. It doesn't it never need to exist. The prequel is even more useless than the remake. It never needed to exist. I almost even forgot they existed. I almost forgot to mention them. And the final film takes a chainsaw 3D is utter garbage. The 3D looks like shit, and there's no reason for this film to exist either. <laughs> this franchise is just just out of steam. There's nothing. There's really nothing they can do with it. First movie was uh, turned out so good purely by accident, and there's just not. They just ain't been able to duplicate that. So I'll see you guys again with the first Halloween review. And like I've said already, avoid this motherfucker like the plague. I'll see you guys again with the Halloween review.